crawlers, creepy crawlers, creepy crawlers. Now, you can make all kinds of lovely things like these with Mattel's wonderful thing maker. It makes creepy crawlers, spiders, lizards, snakes, dragonflies. Get Mattel's new thing maker with creepy crawlers. You can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle, and today I've got a pretty cool episode. This is going to be a little different. I've only found two people on YouTube that have made a video like this, but I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently. Um, I picked up a Creepy Crawlers set from 1965 or 64, whenever it actually came out. So I've got the original set that I found on Macari, and... It came with the heating unit, you guys can see that, and it came with the water cooling tray, and it came with a handle, and a whole bunch of molds. We may have to clean up some of these because there's still some plastic left in, in them from last time, whoever poured them last. But instead of using the creeper crawler plastic, what I was thinking was, and we won't use the heater, and we won't use the bath, maybe use the handle to move them around. but. I was thinking about using some of these and we'll just pour plastic into them and see what kind of things we can create with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip you around here so you can see what I'm looking at and we're gonna pick out some molds that we're gonna go ahead and hand pour some creepy crawler molds with some plastic for fishing and we'll make some cool bug baits and worms I think. I gotta look through these molds. We'll see which ones we're gonna, we're gonna decide to make but we'll make up a couple of them and just see how they come out. So stay tuned, let's do it. Okay guys, so here's the set. There's the manual that came with it. Here's the cooling tray, which we're not gonna use those, and we're not gonna use the heater or heating pad either. We're gonna go ahead and mix up our own bait plastic, and we're gonna pour some of these. The first thing I gotta do is figure out which ones we're gonna do here. So I think these are like pieces and parts kind of thing, which some of these could be pretty cool, and maybe I'll save them for future videos, but I'm just gonna kinda put off to the side here the ones that we're not gonna do. <coughs> a spider could be pretty cool. I don't know about a bat, but the spider could be cool, so we'll probably do that. Uh, this one's got like a, looks like a cockroach kind of thing, a little lizard, a worm, and a scorpion. That could be cool. Let's do a couple of those. This one's got like a, uh, what do they call those things, like silverfish or those uh, centipede looking, not really a centipede or millipede, but one of those things you see like in the basement of your house, they're pretty pretty nasty but maybe we'll do some of those that could be pretty cool too this big bug there's a tick and a grasshopper so we might do all those i think we're gonna i'm not sure what colors we're gonna do right now probably stick to something like black or green pumpkin or something like that let's see we'll see what we got here there's a little rat an ant and a lizard so we'll try those a snake another big like millipede that almost looks like a helgramite kind of not not perfectly but it's pretty close so I might do those two, maybe these small bugs. Another one that's pieces and parts, another one that's spiders and stuff. So we'll try to do a whole bunch of these and see how many we can do. I was thinking about maybe saving some for a future video too, but there's an octopus and a, cr a crab and a crawfish. There's a big toad with some other little bugs. We might wanna do those. So I think that's what we'll do. I think what we'll do is we'll split this up into like a two-parter video. There's a cool one. It's like a caterpillar, another little frog, and some different bugs. So I think what we'll do is we'll split this up. There's parts. Um, not sure what that is. I think got some parts too, but that could be something pretty cool. But we'll, we'll put all these extra ones off to the side. Those are the ones we're not going to do. So we've got about nine molds here that we can play with. I'm thinking we'll probably save that one for some other time. The big spider I kind of want to do now. This big bug in this, actually, I kind of like this uh, this one for, and it's got a snake in there too. So I'll probably do those two today. Let's do some of the bigger ones, I'm thinking. Um, this has got a lot of small bugs on it. Maybe we'll do some of those too. I'm not sure yet, let's see. The worm, that's a must. Let's do, let's do four of them. And then I want to do this toad in this, uh, caterpillar. So we'll save these ones for the next video. I'll do a two-parter video. And we will do these four now, maybe these five later. 
So these are the five I picked out. Probably gonna do, definitely gonna do the spider. Not sure about the bat. We're gonna do that. The snake. Uh, may do these small bugs too while we're at it. And then we'll try to do some of these too. So I'm gonna open pour these molds with hot plastic. And let's just see how they come out. Okay guys, so I'm feeling, I'm thinking just some, I've got some leftover green pumpkin, some, some, uh, it's got some black flake in it, but then I had a little bit of leftover with, had some other flake in it. So I'm just going to throw this together. I'm going to heat all this up. And of course, as always, instead of making hockey pucks, let's go ahead and cut this up into some pieces and, uh, it'll remelt better. And we'll throw in some heat stabilizer as well. But I really like to use, uh, remelted plastic. I mean, the, I don't really want to waste plastic, and I've got so much of it laying around here that and you, typically I have a lot of green pumpkin laying around. I figured this would be a kind of a, a basic color, and then maybe next next time we do part two, maybe I'll do some some funkier colors and some different things. Uh, maybe we'll do some red in the, the little lobster th I think I see in one of them, that kind of thing. So let me just cut this up real quick. We'll throw in some heat stabilizer just to keep it from burning. And then we will heat her up for about three minutes to get her going. And we'll be right back. Okay, this plastic, I just heated it up. It's about 350 right now. It's got a ton of air bubbles in it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the chamber, the vacuum chamber. And we're going to get all the air out of it, get all the moisture out of it. And then I may reheat it up one more time because I want this to be pretty hot. Considering, um, considering all the small appendages and stuff we're going to go into in some of these, which this one I'm a little bit concerned about because it's got all those little arms there. But we'll uh, we'll make do with what we got. We'll try it the best we can here. Just check on this. Let's get out of them. We'll get up to 30, negative 30. And then we will go ahead and pour these in. Okay guys, I've got the fan on right now. I just nuked this for another 30 seconds. We're about 350, 360, so it's pretty hot. We're gonna go ahead and try to pour some of these. We'll just see, I'm just gonna leave it just like that, camera-wise. We'll just see if this works. I need this to be really hot to get some of these appendages. I may have to trim some of this out afterwards. Some of these appendages aren't going to fill out without. So I'm going to have to trim them afterwards. So we'll see how how easy that's going to be too with cleaning up and trimming up the the excess. So these clearly aren't meant to be with this kind of application, but it didn't fill out too bad. So let's just keep going. We're just going to do a bunch of these. I said I'm not going to be pouring these exactly perfect, but something to have fun with. A couple of these bugs. Yeah, you got to have. I mean, this hot, this uh, plastic's very hot. But the problem is that those cavity spaces are so small. We'll just pour them and see if they come out okay. Some of them may come out okay. Some of them may not. Kind of, I wanted to try this scorpion, but I don't know. I think I'm going to have to overshoot everything. These claws are so, there's so much going on there for, uh, so much going on for little, little legs and little antenna and stuff like that. This little lizard has got the tiniest feet try to drop it in there the best I can. Come down the tail here. Like I said, I don't know how these are going to turn out. So, and that's why I bought this. I wanted to check it out. I wanted to see if this is something that we could do or... Yeah, see this one's going to be tough where I almost kind of want to just overpour everything. These little legs. 
Now, one thing that might help, and we may experiment with this for next time, is I, I may just go ahead and heat these up on a hot plate and see if the heat, heating up these molds, if that makes a big difference. Now, this one might turn out pretty cool because this has got a pretty large cavity. And that snake has got a large cavity and it should fill in pretty well. Let's try this spider. Do the legs here. This is this is a pretty good size. Um, pretty good size cavity too, but these appendages for the legs. Little pincers up front. how this is going to turn out. We're going to probably have to trim off some stuff. But let's just start with those and let's see what comes out. Maybe I'll do this with a little spider too. Well, let's go ahead, like I said, the first time around for doing these, I'm just experimenting with pouring in um, cold and we'll let those set up, let those cool down a little bit and we'll see what they look like when they come out. Okay, I think they're cool. Let's go ahead and pull the spider out. Oh, that's pretty awesome. It came out really good. So, you're going to have to trim in between the legs. And it looks like it filled in all the crevices the right way, the pincers and stuff like that. But it's going to have to be trimming up the outsides to get it uh, perfect. But that came out pretty good. So there's a spider. Here's the little, what almost looks like a Helgramite. So look at all the detail I'm gonna to have to cut in between each one of those. So that might not be too fun, but I, I think I just came up with a solution for this. I think if we take this and cut all of the outside off, you kinda of got a nice ridged little worm there, a little drop shot worm. That could work out pretty well. So that's kinda of cool. The snake, that came out pretty awesome. Little, very little trimming very very minimal pouring but a little baby snake I mean bass would eat the crap out of that maybe maybe again on a drop shot or something like that or or you know a lightweight hook just something to cruise along somewhere weightless I mean that'll that'll get eaten big time very minimal change to those um, the worm that's that's obviously enough set I mean that came out great I've got to trim around around the outside edges here Uh, I got to trim a little bit around the outside edge just because I over poured a little bit, but that actually came out pretty good. That's a nice little tasty worm. So that could be a sweet worm, drop shot worm probably again because it's so small. Let me uh, turn this. I know it's halfway through. I'm already talking, but I know that fan gets kind of loud. Anyway, so let's move along. Here's a little tiny lizard. I don't know if you guys can see that very good the palm of my hand that way you can see it better but that came out pretty good so if I can trim around the, the legs a little bit it's a little tiny salamander you can throw that on a small small hook that could be killer in the river and the creeks for a smallmouth put it on like a little uh, uh, Ned rig setup scorpion that that's pretty cool I think that that could represent kind of a crawfish a little bit but the only thing that I don't like about it is I'm going to have to trim in between all those little appendages. So it's going to take some time to make some of those. But again, this is just for fun. I don't, I don't know how many of these I'm actually going to make. And then there's a little, what seems to be like a little caterpillar, and the little, the little appendages didn't come out very, very well. But that's a pretty cool little Ned bait right there. A little Ned head bait. I mean, that's perfect little trim up on that and I think what I'll do is oh well, here's a frog the frog came out pretty well that came out pretty cool again trimming around the feet and stuff like that but that's not too bad not terrible okay let's see what else we got here oh I just did this little beetle bug kind of thing again trimming around the appendages it's gonna take some time so again I, I probably won't do these like to sell or anything like that or I might do some for myself just to play around with in the creek but 
so far so good. I mean, they pour okay. I want, and I'm wondering if a softer plastic might work better too. This little spider, he's got way too many appendages on him, so I probably won't do much with that. Um, that that's kind of a time consumer. So I think out of all of them so far, I like the most. I like the big spider. That could be really cool. Um, this this uh, like Helgramite looking centipede millipede kind of thing. That could be cool. Just cutting the legs off and making it basically like a worm. Uh, the worm came out awesome. The worm came out excellent. And the snake came out pretty cool. Um, I really like the snake, actually. I think I might make a bunch of those. And then that little caterpillar for Ned, that, that's perfect for Ned. So I think I may, might make some of these. Definitely going to make some more worms. Definitely going to make some more of these centipede things. The snakes, I think that's definitely a go. Um... The spider, there's a lot to cut around on that too, but those could be really cool. So I think I'm going to make up a couple of those. The frog, that came out okay. I don't know how well that's going to do, but I think I like that. But these little bugs with all the small appendages and trimming them up, that's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. So I probably won't do these, but I will do the bigger ones. So I probably will do the bigger ones. I'm going to do a couple runs of these and see if I can make up just a bunch of these and just see how they come out and then we will wrap up the video okay we got some more hot plastic I'm just gonna do a couple more I'm gonna do this one again and I'm gonna do the frog again Which I may, I may not do the frog anymore just because <clears throat> that's going to take some time to clean up. <clears throat> we'll do the worm again. Definitely overpowered that. <clears throat> Definitely overpowered that. We'll do this again. Usually have more of a steady hand. That's good. Snake again, that was really cool. And like I said, we've got some more molds to try on the next one. I'll, I'll do some different ones in the next one. Maybe do some different colors too. But these spiders, a lot of appendages. So I'm just going to go ahead and over pour this whole thing real fast because I want all the plastic to be um, together and then we'll cool those down and <clears throat> we will uh, <clears throat> make up a couple more batches I think and then we will wrap it up I think to make this more exciting uh, I poured three of each and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at some point here, not this video, but maybe in a future video, I'm going to take these baits with me over to the creek or the river, and I'm going to toss these around and just see what I can get to bite on them. Probably use some real small hooks, especially like on these little, I might be able to use a Ned, like some kind of a, a weedless Ned bait on that that might be a little bit too big I don't know yeah I may have to I may have to get some smaller hooks something real lightweight with not much to it because I think these are just going to be all too big for these the spider that may might work on the spider but that's probably going to be about it the frogs are are decent size but yeah we'll see but anyway so there you have it guys I I did I did those I did three of each I didn't want to go too crazy I wanted to see how these kind of perform first but I just wanted to show you that you guys could take other things like, you know, this creepy crawler set. Now, I know they make newer creepy crawler set that might be even better. I don't know. Um, but just something something for some interesting content and something different for somebody else to try. I really want somebody else to try this as well besides me. I, I Like I said, there was two other videos that did it. But I'd like to see somebody else kind of try this too, attempt to do this. I think I bought the whole set was like 60 bucks on Mercari. And 
I just want to see what else people can come up with. Like get get a set of these and get the bugs and and see what you guys can come up with. But I'm, I will do a part two of this video. We'll do some different molds and we'll try some different colors. But it was just something different that I saw. Somebody kind of mentioned something to me about it and I said, you know what, that sounds kind of cool. Like I should try that. So uh, here I am trying it and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will wrap this up right now. So there you have it guys, Creepy Crawlers from 1964. 65, we bought a bunch of molds. We tried a, a couple different ones. We're gonna do a part two of this video at some point. We're gonna make some different ones. But we did some snakes, and we did some little caterpillars, and we did some, some spiders, which are gonna be a pain in the butt to trim. We did some frogs, and I'm dropping them out of my hands. And there's all sorts of different little bugs in here. And I, I got thinking, I bet you some of these little bugs would be great for throwing around on like a fly rod or, you know, trout fishing or something like that. I think that would be really awesome to do a bunch of these for that. But again, it's just pouring them precisely. High heat. I may try to heat the molds up next time when we do the part two just to see if it helps get into those little appendages. I bet it will. But it's, it's very difficult to pour all those little appendages and then having to trim them afterwards. Kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll stick to, I mean, injection would be much better suited for something like that, these little bugs and stuff like that. But how cool was that? Something different for you guys to try. And again, I, I, I encourage people to go out there, try this, go buy a set of this, these uh, creepy crawlers on Mercari or wherever you can find it and try it, just check it out, see what you can make. And please send me pictures of what you guys can create with this. I think it's just kind of a cool idea. Somebody, like I said, mentioned giving me the idea and I, I said, you know what, that's actually kind of cool. I think that would make a pretty neat video. So thanks guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We're getting up there. We're almost to 600 subscribers. I'd like to get to a thousand by the end of the year. I, I hope that happens. Um, I'm trying to hopefully get some fishing content to you guys at some point here soon. Weather's starting to get nicer here in Virginia, so we're starting to get uh, get out a little bit. Of course, the pollen's coming right now, so springtime allergies are going to be kind of a pain in the butt for me to deal with too because I get them pretty bad. But we will be out there doing some of that. I got some more uh, lure making videos for you. I think I'm going to do another video on jig skirt colors here coming up soon some some more quicker videos i know some of them have been really lengthy especially with the dusting when i did the the dusting of the swim baits that takes a long time it's a long process so i apologize that the videos are getting a little lengthy but hang tight we got more content coming thanks again for watching guys and remember keep on baiting Thank you.